Streamlabs has now made it even easier to gain access to TikTok Live, and it's even easier to multi-stream for free using dual output. I've been using Streamlabs and Ultra for over three years, and I'm grateful to Streamlabs for sponsoring this video. And speaking of Ultra, everything in this video works for free. But if you want to try the Streamlabs premium plan, I have a seven day free trial for you in the description. And that will help you unlock even more multi-streaming platforms, a massive library of overlays, up to eight different apps and a whole lot more. So let's get access and then let's set up a multi-stream with dual output. And of course, you're going to start on streamlabs.com. I'll put a link in the description and just download Streamlabs desktop. I'll be using Windows, but this does work for Macs as well. And when you open Streamlabs desktop, if you're not prompted to log in, click login in the bottom left corner. And I suggest making a Streamlabs ID. Once you are all logged in, let's get TikTok connected. So I'm going to click settings in the bottom left hand corner and I'm just going to expand the settings and click on stream in the top left. Now, as you can see on this page, I've connected all the accounts I want to live stream on. You can also at the bottom click add destination to add platforms such as kick. But let's focus on TikTok. So you probably have a link button or connect button next to TikTok. And that is going to open up the Streamlabs dashboard and your platform account settings and you just click the merge button next to TikTok. So I've switched to my alt account now and as you can see I have successfully linked TikTok and YouTube in this instance. There is however an additional step required for TikTok so let's just close out or press done on the settings and we're not actually going to go live but if I just disappear for a second and in the bottom right corner if I click on go live and I've just full screened it to show you guys what it would look like you'll probably have this add destination and you have to add in TikTok. TikTok and you'll see this button which says apply for TikTok live permission. Now before you click this if you go live once on another platform such as Twitch, YouTube or Kick then Streamlabs and TikTok will fast track your approval process for TikTok live access. So I suggest you just do a live stream on one of those platforms for any amount of time and we will shortly in this video look at how to set up Streamlabs to do that. So anyway let's just close out of this. And as you can see on the screen, I have two canvases open. This is called dual output. And how have I done this? Well, it's actually pretty simple. So if you look for sources and move your mouse to the right, it will either say enable or disable dual output. So let's just pretend for my sake that it's currently disabled. So I will click on it to enable it and it will pop up these settings. And by default, it will often suggest good settings. The ones on the screen for horizontal are good. And for vertical, it basically just flips it to 1080 by 1920. And I like these settings as well. While we're in the settings, we may as well check everything else. So let's start on output. And I'm going to suggest you just keep it on simple. You can go anywhere from 6000 to 8000 bitrate. And once again, in general, I'm seeing some good settings here. So you are just welcome to pause and copy them. Let's click now into audio. And this is where I recommend that you add your headset and microphone. So under desktop audio device one, I'm going to add my cloud to wireless headset. Underneath mic, I'm going to add my HyperX quadcast. So typically those are the only settings we need to change. So the done button is beneath me and I will press done. And as you can see, I now have a horizontal output and a vertical output. So let's now get your live stream set up. I'm going to start with an important filter on the microphone. So look in the mixer and I'm going to disappear again for a second. I'm going to click the settings cog next to your microphone, find the filters option and press edit. And I'm going to press add filter and find noise suppression and press add. And I'm going to suggest RN noise for most people. If your room is really bad, up it to one of the NVIDIA options. This is going to remove the sound of things like fans, AC and any background noise. So I'll just press close. So now let's set up your live stream for dual output multi-streaming. And you've probably got blank scenes and sources like this. If you don't already have a scene added, press the plus button. For me, I'm going to right click where it already says scene. And let's add the two most popular scenes. Let's add full camera and let's add your computer display and a small webcam. So I'll rename this scene to camera only. I'll press done. I'll press the plus button again and name this one whatever you want. For example, I'm going to name mine gameplay and press done. And let's click back into camera only and let's start by adding our camera. So under the sources, press the plus button, click onto video capture device and press add source. I'm going to add my Obstock Tail Air camera. So I've named it as such and press add source again. And then just find it on the list. So I've found it here. 
And let me just full screen the settings. And what I like to do is choose custom settings and just go through the settings and apply the best settings for my camera. Usually that just means the highest resolution and the best FPS available. So when I'm happy with that, I'll press close. As you can see, my camera's now added, but it is of course the wrong dimensions. So there's a few different things we can do to fix that. I'm just gonna make sure I click on the source list. And as you can see in both vertical and horizontal output, there's now these squares appeared in the corner, which means I can just drag any of these squares to resize it. I can also just right click transform and choose the fit to screen option. And it's done it on both canvases. But of course, I wanna actually stretch it out on the vertical output. So I'm just gonna manually drag it to the top and then drag the bottom and there you go. Now I've got a full screen camera on both horizontal and vertical. Now let's look at two more best practices. I strongly suggest that you click this lock icon to lock it. That just means I can now not accidentally click it and drag it around. And if you ever wanna hide something from either horizontal or vertical, if you hover over the source, you can see it says hide from horizontal and hide from vertical. For example, the camera is now hidden in vertical and it's back again. So let's set up the gameplay scene now. So let's click onto gameplay and I'm just gonna add my monitor. So let's click on sources. So I'm gonna keep it simple and add display capture. This is gonna add everything on my monitor. A lot of people do prefer something like game capture and that is this one and that will only show the game. I'm just careful what I show on my screen. You can also try window capture. So whatever you prefer, just choose it and press add source. You can give it a different name if you want and press add source. And then the automatic capture method is usually fine for the display, just find the correct display. Of course, make sure you capture the cursor and press done. And once again, click on it under sources so it is now highlighted. And again, if you need to drag the corners to resize it, feel free to do that. If you need to right click transform fit to screen, go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna do the classic on the vertical output. We'll put the camera in the top third and we'll put the gameplay in the bottom two thirds. So in the vertical output, I'm just gonna drag it down something like that and I'll give it a bit more space at the top actually and when you're happy once again lock your source in place and of course we need to add the camera but we've already added it so let's click to add the source again and choose video capture device click on add source but again you can see it's already there so now I just need to click on add source and once again I'm going to click on it underneath sources and we want to massively shrink it down this time so I'm just going to keep dragging and shrinking it down until I've got it somewhere where I want so I've played around with it a bit. I've got it down to the size I want, and then I can just drag it anywhere on the screen where I want it. You can also use the arrow keys to move it pixel by pixel. And in this case, I can right click transform and I could center it vertically. There we go. And it's now vertically centered on the screen. Of course, I now need to do the same for my vertical output. So let's just fast forward until that's done. So there we go, that is looking good now. And of course, we're on Streamlabs. So one more important source here, press the plus button and we're gonna add in our Streamlabs alert box. So just click on alert box, click on add source, click on add source again. You can customize it here. You can also go on streamlabs.com slash dashboard for even more customization. Once you're happy with the customization, click close. And once again, I'm gonna click on the alert box and the square shows me where it's going. So for example, in the vertical output, if I wanna put it somewhere in the middle of the gameplay, I would just drag it down. Again, you can once again, right click it, transform and choose some of those options to place it wherever you want. And we've missed one of our best practice steps here. I need to lock the camera into place. And then let's also lock the alerts into place when we're happy with them. And speaking of alerts, I realized while editing this video, I should probably show you how to test the alerts as well so you can see what they look like. So it's really simple. I'm just gonna double click on my alert box. And then you can see to the right of all these different alerts, you've got the play button. So if I just drag this box down a little bit, if I just then press the play button next to one of my alerts, you can see the alerts now on the screen. And then I could adjust it the way I want it. This, by the way, is one of the alert widgets from Streamlabs Ultra. So now if I click back and forth in my scenes, you can see I've got a full camera scene and it switches in both the horizontal and the vertical output in sync. And of course, I've got a gameplay scene as well. And we are now ready to multi-stream for free on two different platforms. So once again, I will disappear from the bottom right and I'll click on go live in the bottom right. And in my example here, I would just choose YouTube for horizontal and TikTok for vertical. And again, in this example, I'm on my second account, so I haven't yet applied for access, but basically go live once just on Twitch, YouTube or Kick, and then apply for TikTok access and you will be fast tracked into TikTok live. And again, as a reminder, if you just wanna go live on one of the horizontal platforms, just click on the disable dual output button. And as you can see, 
we now just have the landscape canvas and once again you can just re-enable dual output with just a few clicks and I can now once again stream in vertical as well. No doubt you've noticed this scene option in the overlays on the left hand side of Streamlabs. If you click on advanced search and type in free there is some free overlays and widgets but of course if we just head to home there is thousands of overlays as part of Streamlabs Ultra. It's just a case of clicking on your chosen overlay and clicking select and install. And then of course, edit any scenes and sources that you want to change. Streamlabs Ultra also has themes for alerts and widgets. So as you can see, there's 2,500 of these. And by far my favorite Streamlabs Ultra feature is the ability to multi-stream on up to 10 different platforms in both horizontal and vertical. In this example, I don't even have Kick or Instagram added yet. So once again, if you want to try out Streamlabs Ultra, I have a seven day free trial for you, which is in the description. Now, just finally, people always ask me, how do I read the chat after I've gone live on TikTok? Well, after you go live with Streamlabs, it will pop up a website you can read the chat from. You can also read it from your phone for most other chats though Streamlabs has a chat combiner so if I click on this arrow here and then I click onto multi-stream this chat combiner here will combine Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, X and Trovo all into one place and as you can see it will even let me type into Facebook, Twitch or YouTube chats or all of them combined so as I said earlier I'll put all of the relevant links in the description and thank you to Streamlabs for sponsoring this video